Welcome back. The road trip continues. Day two in Akaroa, and the weather has swung back in our favour. Our next stop is Kaikoura, but we've got a few hours on the water before we get back on the road, and our next keen Staby owner is down at the local ramp waiting for us. Yeah, hi Mike, I'm Grant Ingham. Uh, this is my 2001 593XR Stabycraft uh, that I've had for five years. I bought it second hand from uh, Miles O'Donnell, good mate of mine. And apparently he arrived home one day out of the blue. Uh, he'd just bought a boat, so his wife Kieran didn't know anything about it, and uh, that's how it's got his name, out of the blue. Unfortunately, I got Mike's camera a wee bit wet in the new boat, uh, but uh, yeah, it handles really nice. Uh, very smooth uh, ride in. wasn't wasn't rough today, but uh, yeah, just handled really really well. Uh, my favourite thing about this uh, boat, uh, Mike, is uh, the back deck. It's uh, uh, ideal size for uh, diving. We can fit four divers in here easily with all our gear. Um, and when we clamber back in the boat, we've still got plenty of room to get uh, changed. But yeah, just a generally, generally all round good sea boat. We're based in Akaroa. Uh, we've got a holiday house here. I live in Christchurch and we spend uh, most weekends in the summer out here and enjoy a bit of fishing and diving with a brother-in-law. Getting into boating when I was growing up, uh, I had a couple of uncles that uh, had boats. So um, I had a granddad that lived in Lake Taupo, had a, had a little dinghy, so family didn't have a boat, but uh, uncles had a boat that I enjoyed. Uh, going out fishing, water skiing, and also had a had a mate at Lincoln that was uh, a very keen water skier and learned to ski behind his boat in Lake Canary. Yeah, we've got quite a good uh, front uh, cabin there, just about big enough to have a have a snooze in. One of the best features is this uh, little step here. Uh, it is just ideal for the, for my height, just getting up and over. Um, there's plenty of plenty of handles to to hold on to when you when you're on the boat. This is Helen's favourite spot, sitting up here, holding on. The other thing I like is uh, this step here at the back here. We've got the hatch that we can, so when we're diving we take this off, slide it on that side, and pretty easy to get on and off when you're diving. With your dive gear you've got a couple of handles to pull yourself up. Bloody marvellous. Love it. We have to give a special thanks to local bar and eatery, The Har Bar, for letting us inside their establishment to grab some footage of the 2050 Super Cab moored out the front. They are very awesome. Make sure you go and check them out if you're in the area. They do great food and drinks. It's a hidden gem. But back on the road, this time 180 k's north of Christchurch, we hit Kaikoura, which basically means meal of crayfish. An amazing wild place that unfortunately recently had some damage there back in 2016. A massive earthquake heavily damaged the area and actually lifted the bay by as much as two metres in some areas. It's a very diverse area for sea life, whales, dolphins, it's all there. And we're off to meet our next Stevie Craft owners, Kyla and Mike and the young family. Kia ora, I'm Kyla. And this is our Fano Waka, this is our 1550 Fisher. We launched from South Bay today in Kaikoura. Um, we shot out, um, we had a couple of attempts, we got some perch, and then we carried on, we went a bit deeper from there and we met by some dolphins in Kaikoura, which circled the boat, which is pretty cool. After our fishing, Mike decided he wanted to try and see what the water was like around seal colony. So we shot out around seal colony, um, we went to about 20 metres and the water was looking absolute rubbish. Um, so we decided to come back into the shore, we swapped over boats to the big 2050, which was amazing, um, put all the gear on the boat. Mike wasn't going to go for a dive because the viz was not good. Um, but he jumped in anyway, had a wee look around and we got some butterfish and some crayfish, some kinna. Um, brought the catch home, washed down the boat, filleted the fish, prepared the kinna, and then um, got the catch ready for dinner that night. The 2050 handled as I expected to. It was amazing. It was a really cushioned ride. You could still have a conversation in the cab, and I was talking to my husband and my kids at the same time. But what stood out was the space. 
the handrails were handy as well, just standing while you're boating along, you had handrails everywhere you could grab. There was little seats in the view berth, which my youngest loved, he felt safe up there. That's why he sat there first of all, so when he got, off, when he got on the boat. We took it out for um, some speed runs, we did some donuts on it, and it handled just superbly. It was effortless, and we felt safe the whole time, you know, we circling around quite tight. It's just an amazing boat. Um, so how I prepared everything from today's catch, I had two perch that I scaled and left whole. I cut some slits in them, um, covered it with oil and just a, um, a rub, and then I barbecued them for about, I don't know, it was 10, 15 minutes each side. Um, I finished them with a, it's kind of like a chimichurri, but it's a green onion and ginger sauce. So I just drizzled that over the barbecued fish. I also made coconut crumb um, butterfish from what Mike shot today in the water. With the kinna, um, Mike managed to get a couple of crayfish. So I made a kinna butter that I smeared over the crayfish and then I cooked it over the open fire for the barbecue um, until it was nearly ready. And then I put the crayfish in a pan, smeared it with some more kinna butter. Um, until it was nice and warm and melty, and that was the crayfish done. Dad brought a batch here in Kokoda not long after he brought a boat, um, and it was it was a fiberglass boat, and it was really awesome on lakes. We'd go biscuiting and um, wakeboard and all that stuff. And I'd drive the boat out there. Um, he sold it not long after, and then it would have been about ten years gap before he brought his stable craft. It became the Farno boat not long after. <laughs> Dad gracefully lent, lent, lent the kids his boat. So I took it and then my brother had a turn with it and then it came back to us and we'd had it up in Wellington and now it's circled back here to Kokoda where it belongs. What I love the most about our waka is the safety. We always feel safe in it. It's only a small boat, but no matter how rough the conditions have been in, we've never felt unsafe because it's so stable. They've maximized the space on the boat so even though there's mum and dad and two kids on the board, there's always space for us to move around and I think the Craft's done a real awesome job with maximising every space that they can available. So when we're fishing, uh, when we've got especially four fishes on board, we can pop up the windscreen here. This comes up and so you've got a fisher fishing out the front here and you've got three out the back and there's more than enough room for everybody to fish happily. Yeah. It's really easy to beach launch, so we've actually pulled up to little locations around harbours, um, anchored up and spent the day just cooking and chilling out on a beach, so really easy for beach retrieval and launching as well. And because it's open sort of platform, it's easy to climb up with your fins still on, on the ladder, and there's a little handle at the back, you just pull yourself up, and they've made it super easy. There's a nice little clearing there that you can climb over, and yeah, it just doesn't get any easier. Next up on the road trip, we are off to the legendary Marlborough Sounds. We bump into a couple of familiar faces and we head out with Jason Anderson, a Stabycraft owner who is mad, mad for Kingfish. <laughs> 